Processing your recorded voice is important, and if you're familiar with my channel, you know how the proper EQ, compression, and other effects can make a measured improvement in your voice sound. Now, what about mastering? Is it necessary? How is it different from voiceover processing, and what does it do for your sound? I'm Lenny B, and I'm going to walk you through the mastering setup for one of my clients using only stock plugins for Adobe Audition. Let's make your voice sound better. We're going to do something a little bit different today. One of my clients has asked me to help with uh, a mastering chain, which is something you do that's totally, completely different from processing your audio. It's something you do at the end when you're going to uh, finally decide where you're going to send your audio. Uh, and it's different for each platform. So if uh, in this case, he's going to be sending it to uh, YouTube or Facebook, and we are going to make a specific mastering chain to optimize the volume, but not too much because we don't want the platform's algorithms to uh, limit it or expand it or, or change the audio. We want to retain the sonic tone as best as possible. So he's working in only Audition and he uh, hired me to make him a custom processing chain with only the stock plugins from Adobe Audition. And I'm going to do the same thing for him for his mastering uh, section. So as you can see here, I've got a saturation, parametric EQ, dynamics, de and a tube model compressor. So this is the uh, custom mastering chain that we used. And why don't we take a listen to that here? Let's shut everything off and let's listen to his voiceover. It's in Spanish and uh, he's uh, definitely doing a, co a commercial spot for radio and TV. Regresa el mejor espectáculo. Motocross en Quillabamba. So uh, that was the original audio. And now let's hear uh, with the processing chain that I have uh, put together for him. Las mejores motos, el mejor circuito, los pilotos más pro, y las anfitrionas más guapas. Este 1 de mayo, rugen los motores en el paraíso de Guayayoc. Okay, so you can hear the difference there. So now he wants to get the levels in the right place, make it loud enough, but not distort. He wants to retain those tone adjustments that I've put together for him, but he wants to find an appropriate mastering level uh, before he posts it to YouTube. So what I've done is I've opened up a, um, by the way, he also wanted a little reverb and echo, which is just awesome. It sounds good. I got to play that for you. Hold on. El mejor circuito. Los pilotos más pro. <laughs> that sounds great. One thing you need to understand is when we're doing any kind of mastering and preparing um, the right levels for a particular platform like YouTube, the, the metering is really your roadmap. You want to make sure you're hitting the right levels uh, according to their loudness standards, and each platform has a different standard. Some situations uh, call for just raw audio with no uh, mastering. Some situations call for a specific volume like YouTube or uh, some streaming. If you're making music and you're sending it to Spotify, they're going to have different... Uh, different mastering and loudness standards. So uh, it's important to find out where you're going uh, and where you're sending it to, and you could appropriately kind of adjust the mastering specifically for whatever platform you're sending it to. So that's what we're going to look at today. So what I am uh, putting together for him in this is for YouTube. And I went and looked online. So YouTube is looking for a max integrated at negative 14 LUFS uh, with a true peak at negative one. That's what YouTube, and you know, if you look at Apple Music, it's different. If you look at uh, Tidal, Amazon Music, they've all got different, uh, Spotify's got a whole different deal, negative 11 LUFS. Uh, with a minus 2 dB uh, true peak. So um, we're looking at YouTube, but just understand that every platform uh, has a different uh, kind of standard they want you to follow. And here's the deal. You can send uh, a louder level or a quieter level to these platforms, but they have uh, their own processing when they do the compression to put the file on their platform. It runs through a, a whole system. And so they're going to get it to that standard. So if you send it way above they're going to have to modify it. If you send it way below, they're going to have to modify it. And if you want to retain the best tone possible that you can, which we all want to do because we've spent a lot of time and effort and money getting uh, our tone and our sound right for our voiceovers, uh, you know, if you want to retain that sound, it's a smart move to make sure you get uh, your levels as close to their loudness standard as possible. This way, they won't change it that much. And since uh, we saw that YouTube's uh, loudness target is 14 LUFS, I set that to negative 14 here. Uh, I had to change it to LUFS because it was on a different uh, default setting. 
Uh, let's see. And also our peak indicator, that's okay. And um, the rest of it we can do. So I just wanted to set those two. Uh, and then you could look and it actually will show you where you're at and it'll give you that uh, um, integrated peak. So here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to play this. I'm going to put it back to zero. This is where the limiter was. Uh, it was back at zero. Let's make it zero. And uh, I've set this. This might have been at zero and I set it to negative one because that's what we want our negative one. Uh, that's what we want our maximum peak to be. And I set it to true peak. I think it, it, the default is on peak. So negative one and then look ahead time. That's fine. Release time. That's fine. And we're going to change the amount of boost that this limiter pushes it to that limit before it kind of cuts off everything. And then what that's going to do is by, by adding the volume here, what that's going to do is raise the LUFS and it's the integrated loudness of, of this track. So let's play this from the beginning and uh, I cleared out the meter and really what you, you're you able to, once you play this whole clip and you play through for quite a while, the longer you play it, the better this resolution is going to be because it's adding up, it's integrated, it's adding up all of the, the loudness with the quietest and the loudest spots. It's giving you an average basically of, of uh, the loudness at in the clip. So let's play it through without any limiting. We're just looking at the meter here. Este 1 de mayo. Este 1 de mayo. Regresa el mejor espectáculo. Motocross en Quillabamba. So no, now this doesn't have any limiting. We're not doing any mastering yet, but I've, I've just played it through. I would usually play through the whole clip just to get a really true or, or when those numbers stop bouncing around. So we're at negative 22 LUFS. So we have to raise this and you can see on the meter... Oh. Las mejores motos, you know, el mejor circuito. Now that we've done all the processing, our, our peaks are like negative six, and, and, and you know, it's, it's lower here in the output level. Los pilotos más pro y las anfitrionas más guapas. You could see before the compression, where really the dynamics are much, the difference in, in the loudest and the quietest parts of this audio are much different than the output after the compression. You can see that the, um, the dynamic range is smaller. Este 1 de mayo, rugen los motores. It goes above and it goes below, and this one stays more, this stays in a smaller range, and that's what compression does. So what that's going to allow us to do is push the level up in the mastering phase, and I'm going to just emphasize this one more time, because it's really important. Get all of your processing done first, and, and you know what I like to do is I like to actually use a separate session. I'll close, I'll bounce it out without doing any mastering. I'll bounce it out. I'll have my file. All the uh, level matching has taken place already. The gain staging is happening and I'll just save it, export it as a, a WAV file or a lossless audio file. And then I'll actually make a mastering session, open up a whole new session in uh, Logic or Adobe Audition or Reaper or whatever you're using. Then I'll put it in and then I'll do a, a mastering session on top of that. Uh, it forces you to make it forces you to not make any changes because it's tempting. You may want to go back and, ah, maybe I should change the EQ a little bit. That's like, uh, that's like fighting blind. That's really what it is. Okay. So what this hard limiter is going to allow us to do is push the volume up. It's going to boost the input volume, but none of it ever is going to go over minus one. It's a, basically what this is. It's a compressor with a very, very high ratio. It's infinite ratio is what it is. So it, it, the volumes go up to a point and then it just stops. It won't go any uh, higher than this negative one that we're setting it to. So it's allowing us to push it all the way up to the top. Uh, and um, usually a, a brick wall limiter is pretty transparent. You can't tell, but it, it shows that we're getting the file louder without distorting retaining our tone adjustments that we did in the production, in the processing. So we're at minus 21.9. Let's reset it again. So if I want to get it to 14, I'm going to bump it up about 7, and then we're probably going to fine-tune it a little bit. So you'll see, I'll go 6.4. Let's do just 7 dB. So I've increased the input. We've boosted the volume input going going out, and that, but we're preventing it from going over negative 1 ever. So now let's see what this uh, loudness meter says once we play it from the beginning again. Este 1 de mayo, este 1 de mayo, regresa el mejor espectáculo. Motocross en Quillabamba. Las mejores motos, el mejor circuito. Los pilotos más pro. Y las anfitrionas más guapas. Este 1 de mayo, rugen los motores. 
All right, I've played about halfway through the clip, so we, we're seeing a good uh, level. It's about minus 14, but we, we can get it probably a little higher. Is it always going to be, you know, I don't want it to go into minus 13. Let's just put it that way. So I'm going to go up about 0.5. All right, let's see where this 0.5 increase to 7.5 dB in the boost for this uh, limiter. Let's see where this takes us from the top. Este 1 de mayo, este 1 de mayo, regresa el mejor espectáculo. Motocross en Quillabamba. Las mejores motos, el mejor circuito, los pilotos más pro y las anfitrionas más guapas. Uh, let's go to 8. Let's see where that uh, let's see where 8 takes us. 8.0. Este 1 de mayo, este 1 de mayo, regresa el mejor espectáculo. Motocross en Quillabamba. Las mejores motos, el mejor circuito, los pilotos más pro y las anfitrionas más guapas. Este 1 de mayo, rugen los motores en el paraíso de Guayayoc. Lo demás es puro ruido. Evento organizado por el Club de Motocross. I know I'm taking a long time here. I'm playing it out because the longer you play and it's averaging more and more of the dynamics to give you that loudness and we're, we're getting pretty close. So I'm going to back it off just 0.2. Doesn't matter that much. We're talking about really, really tiny, minute changes in the in the volume. But if you feel like you want to get it as close as possible, you can shoot for that. Let's try one more time. We'll reset it and see how close we got this uh, to uh, the negative 14 loudness standard for YouTube. Este 1 de mayo. Este 1 de mayo. Regresa el mejor espectáculo. Motocross en Quillabamba. Las mejores motos, el mejor circuito, los pilotos más pro y las anfitrionas más guapas. Este 1 de mayo, rugen los motores en el paraíso de Guayayoc. Lo demás es puro ruido. All right, well, I'm happy with that. I would uh, probably hold it right there and export it now. And so what we've done is we added a limiter and we've added a, uh, a loudness meter in Adobe Audition to give us, you know, we, we got the roadmap, we could look at the meter and see and get really, really close to the loudness standard from our desired platform. Now, is this everything you need to know about mastering? For voiceover, for now, yes. But the mastering process can include compression, EQ. It could include uh, really these broad strokes of all different types of mid-side EQ, and it goes on and goes on. Uh, but for now, that's all. Uh, I just want you to know that mastering does go much, much deeper than this. But for now, this is a, a good kind of a... Um, I'm going to start, like I, I mentioned before, I'm going to start talking a little bit more about mastering because it's important and uh, it's, a, it's a, an important piece to make sure your demo, to make sure your audition sounds better than everybody else to help you get the gig for voiceover or, uh, or anything else that you're doing. As always, I invite you to visit my website. It's LennyB.com. I've got um, training courses. I've got uh, tips and techniques. There's free stuff up there. And what I want to do is invite you to send me your audio file because I do a, a custom processing chain like I've done here for Gilmar. You send me your audio clip. I give you an idea of what a custom processing sound will be like and you get to hear it. And then if you're interested in fine tuning it, we can do that and get it on your system. It's all at LennyB.com. Questions and comments are great below. I try to get back to everybody as soon as I can. When you know your voice sounds better, you'll perform better, you'll be more confident in your delivery. And if this is your passion, invest in yourself, do something about it. Let's make your voice sound better.